Hello there AP Psychology students and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video, we are going to continue reviewing the different science practices as we move through unit zero of AP Psychology. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on how cultural norms, expectations, circumstances, as well as cognitive biases apply to behavior and mental processes. Remember to make sure you don't forget any of the important concepts in this video by clicking the link in the description of the video and getting my guided notes. So to start, we are going to talk about cultural norms, expectations, and circumstances, things that we have to consider whenever we are looking at different experiments, individuals, groups, and situations. Now, I think it'll be easier to understand the impact of these concepts by looking at a quick scenario. While I'm reading off the scenario, see if you can identify the cultural norms, expectations, and circumstances, and how they impact the individual. Emma wants to pursue a career in engineering, a field predominantly occupied by men in her society. Society. When Emma tells her family and friends about her aspirations, she finds that they are less than supportive. In fact, she ends up facing resistance as people continuously tell her she should focus on more appropriate roles for women, such as teaching or nursing. All right, now I want to highlight a couple things in this scenario. The first being the cultural norms, which are shared rules and guidelines within a community that dictate appropriate and acceptable behaviors in society. We can see that in this community, jobs such as engineering are traditionally for men, while jobs that focus on care are traditionally for women. This could indicate that this society has more traditional cultural values and norms. Now we can also observe cultural expectations as well. Expectations are the anticipated behaviors and roles individuals are expected to fulfill based on cultural norms. In our scenario, we can see that when Emma went against the expectations that were put on her, she faced pushback as individuals sought to try and pressure her to focus on the expectations over her wants. Lastly, we could also look at the circumstances that Emma faced. Circumstances refer to the situations in which individuals find themselves in, often including socioeconomic factors, historical events, and the person's geographical location. Emma's community might have limited opportunities for women in STEM fields and lack a support for women pursuing non-traditional careers, which would ultimately influence Emma's behaviors, since she may not be able to pursue certain actions actions due to her circumstances that were outside of her control. By understanding cultural norms, expectations, and circumstances, we can gain insight into different factors that influence an individual's behaviors and mental processes. None of us exist in isolation. We are constantly being influenced by external factors. So it's important that we spend time understanding how these factors can influence us as individuals. Now, it's not just cultural factors that we need to be aware of. We also always need to be on the lookout for our own biases, which can impact how we view different events, individuals, groups, and also impact different experiments, research, and studies. Cognitive biases such as the confirmation bias, hindsight bias, and overconfidence can impact our thoughts and actions. The confirmation bias is the tendency to seek out information that aligns with our point of view, while at the same time dismissing information that challenges our beliefs. This bias tends to cause an individual to more easily believe evidence that supports their views and reject evidence that contradicts their perspective. For example, let's say you're talking with one of your coworkers about work ethic. Your coworker strongly believes that the younger generations today are not as hardworking as previous generations. One day at work, your coworker notices a young employee taking a short break and immediately comments saying, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Young people today just don't want to work hard. However, later that same day, another young employee stays late to finish a project and your coworker doesn't comment on this at all, instead focuses on other things. In this example, your coworker is exhibiting confirmation bias by paying attention to the behavior that confirms their belief while ignoring the evidence that contradicts it. Generally speaking, we can see that confirmation bias can lead to polarized thinking and prevent individuals from considering new information that might challenge their beliefs. Up next is hindsight bias, which is the tendency to think that one could have anticipated the outcome of an event or experiment after it already occurred. Essentially, hindsight bias is the tendency to think that information is less surprising once you knew it. Generally, this bias happens because once our brains learn something, we start making connections to all of the other information that we know and start to see patterns. Hindsight bias can distort memories and affect how individuals learn from past experiences. It also makes 
may result in individuals overestimating their ability to predict future events. Which leads us to our next concept, which is overconfidence. This is the tendency to overestimate one's knowledge, the likelihood of being correct, or an individual's ability to perform certain tasks. For instance, a student who consistently gets A's in their high school classes might become overconfident in their ability to perform well on challenging exams in college. The student may underestimate the need for them to study and prepare for the exam. As a result, they may not study, which may result in them struggling in their college exams. Overconfidence can lead an individual to make poor decisions decisions or engage in risky behaviors, since individuals may take on tasks that they are not prepared for. Now there are other biases that we need to be aware of, such as the experimenter bias, social desirability bias, sampling bias, and the self-report bias. But we'll talk about more of those in the next video when we look at research methods and design. Okay, we have to change gears now and talk about applying psychological concepts and theories. But real quick, before we do, I just want to let you know that if you are struggling with any of the concepts we've already talked about in this video, I've created a free practice quiz in my ultimate review packet. You can find it in the unit zero section. Just sign up for the free preview by clicking the link in the description down below. All right, now if psychological concepts or theories are applied to situations or individuals in an inappropriate manner or in a discriminatory way, it can have significant ethical, social, and practical implications. For instance, misdiagnosing a mental health condition due to cultural biases or relying on outdated stereotypes types could lead to ineffective or harmful treatments. For example, some intelligence tests have been criticized for being used in incorrect ways to justify certain stereotypes of different cultural groups. William H. Tucker, a professor of psychology at Rutgers University, highlights this in this issue of the UN Chronicle, stating, For the first quarter of the 20th century, there was particular concern over the results of early intelligence tests, which supposedly demonstrated that Southern and Eastern Europeans were not only intellectually inferior to their northern counterparts, but were also unfit for self-rule. He continues by pointing out that, in the last half century, the controversy over intellectual and moral traits has focused primarily on the differences between blacks and other races, which were often cited by those seeking to preserve white minority rule in South Africa and legal separation in the United States. When looking at intelligence tests, we can see how the work of certain individuals has been taken and used in incorrect ways to judge and categorize other people. Alfred Bennett created an intelligence scale which later became the Stanford Binet IQ test to help identify French children with developmental disabilities who needed extra support in school. Binet warned against using his test to label children and adults on a fixed scale of intelligence. However, Henry Goddard, an American eugenicist, ignored Binet's warnings and translated the test into English and pushed for it to be used in the United States using it to rank people into different mental categories. Goddard would later use this test to argue that society should prevent people that were found to be feeble-minded from having children, either through sterilization or isolation. So we can see just how important it is to make sure that we check for our own cognitive biases, that we consider the different cultural factors that may be at play, and that we make sure that we correctly apply different psychological concepts and theories to different individuals experiments, treatments, and situations in the correct way. All right, now comes the time to practice what we've learned. When you're done answering the questions, you can find the answers to them down in the comment section below. And remember, if you're looking for more help with your AP Psychology class, don't forget to check out my Ultimate Review Packet, which has everything you need to not only get an A in your class, but to help you get a five on that national exam. As always, thank you so much for watching. My name is Mr. Sin, and I will see you next time online.